sometimes you'll get problems in the tendons here at the front uh, or at the back. So you can place your thumb near your tendon attachment, um, typically on the shoulder. You can have a look, you have two, two dimples here near the AC joint, and that's where all the tendons are coming in. And uh, if they're very bad AC joint break or acromioclavicular inflammation, you want to make sure that you pluck the tendons in there. But sometimes plucking them for even 20 or 30 seconds is so painful. And they may have a bursa in there, <coughs> and that bursa is causing pressure and pain. So to help release it and to help open up the tendon channels is I place in the space where the muscle, <coughs> you'll feel it, there's a space here just by the AC joint. Do you want to just put your finger on that, Paddy, so you can... Mm -hmm. Yeah? There's an opening. You place your thumb on there, and then, as if you were rowing a boat, you pull back, step forward, keeping the pressure on the tendon. How's that? Yeah, you can feel it. It should be quite str quite strong. Yeah, it is quite deep and strong. Well, this is very good for your clacky, clicky, clunky shoulders. Now, if the clacky, clicky, clunkies are no pain when they clack, crack, clink, and clunk, then it's usually tendon. If they have pain as soon as it clicks or clunks, you want to refer them on to get their shoulder MRI. Mm -hmm. Because if it clunks and it's pain, it's going to be a joint, guaranteed. Yeah, more common in your motorcycle riders, your <coughs> GAA lads who have high, a lot of high tackles. Motorcycle come off and they break their collarbones, don't they? Uh, Martin bikers, these kinds of people, more prone to. <coughs> so can they help if the clicks and clunks and clunks that you do there? Yeah. Does that get rid of them? Uh, I don't know. <coughs> I don't know. It, um, it will improve them. But if it's tendonitis, yes. Um, if it's just if it's a ligament a strain, sprain, sorry, and the ligament is lengthened, you pretty much they're always going to click and clunk. But it just may be less clicking, and clunking, and clanking. Right. So Hippocrates said. If a joint is tight, rub it. If a joint is loose, rub it. <laughs> Actually says in, and then he says that. So you massage to bind the joint, and you also massage to loosen it. And the tweener has the same thing. That's why often the, the routine looks the same, but you're yeah. treating three or four diseases. Okay. You can see now a nice red ecchymosis there. We're getting up there. Mm. And then at the same at the back here. So I'm coming forward, I'm sitting back. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm actually using the rotation of the joint as the massage deeper with the pressure remaining on the tendon. That's doing the work for me. Okay, that's an easier another thing you can do. Um, the, other then, the other thing then with the, uh, the arm is sometimes the pain is at the front, okay, right in here. <coughs> yeah. So you want to check the AC joint with the clavicle. So you, you get underneath the clavicle and lift it and do the same thing. So I'm hooking underneath the clavicle, not on top of it, because that's the Vulcan death grip. Mm. <laughs> yeah, do you remember him? Sparky passed away there recently, didn't he? Mm, yeah, but, yeah. but that's where he would go for the brachial plexus nerve. So if coming underneath the clavicle is more tolerable. And myself and Paddy were doing some shinada a couple of weeks ago, and one of the easiest ones is to just drop the clavicle, and the person will let go of you if they're trying to strangle you. Strong, isn't it? Yeah. 
So you're working the kidney meridian as well. And the other one then is to actually small intestine 11. I usually do this lying down. You can do it. You can do it seated. You support the front. You come to here. Drop. Press, and then you rotate. You ask the person to keep their head up. Where's that travelling to? Is it just local? Just, just, just local yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the, the action is... So I'm relaxing. Mm. And as I'm relaxing, the more power. Mm. And it, it, you can get a referral into the fingers, yeah. Okay. That's very good for people who can't do it. Their arm is like that. And they feel the pain here, but you treat behind, okay. and suddenly they'll release. It will. I had a guy in a couple of weeks ago, repeated shoulder injury, and he couldn't get his arm up, and he was in a lot of pain. And we did all the work, and at the end we did this, and I said, if I can get your arm above 120, you won't freeze, but we have to do it tonight. And I just kept going, and eventually he was able to do that. Now, the following day, he was in a lot of pain, but he was still doing this, mm. and on day three, pain was completely gone. It's really sure. Because if you don't, you have to explain to them frozen shoulder is different. Frozen shoulder is extremely painful. Mm -hmm. It's the tendons all reaching in, pulling on structures, pulling on nerves. Okay, so his wasn't a frozen shoulder. It was going to go to a frozen shoulder. He, we caught it within a few days. If you've ever had it, it's horrible. Yeah, yeah. How long did it take you to get better? 18 months. 18 months. Yeah. That was going to doctors and all the rest of that. Yeah. Uh, eventually, I just had to do it. It was simple enough exercise. I couldn't get my hands any higher than that. Wow. Pain, I mean, it was impossible. Yeah. So one, I, one shoulder above. But I had to walk up the wall. What yeah, walk up, up the wall, wall. yeah. So, really, before you do the shoulder, so in your notes, you should like go this first. <laughs> <laughs> but this, I do the shoulder first because it's a lot. So we get it out of the way and get it into your head. Hmm? Do the other, do the other, no. Might as well. Yeah. <laughs> do the other neck. He's got two necks. Right? <laughs> He's got a yeah, rubber one and a brass one. He's <laughs> got a lovely head. But he won lovely baby competition, didn't you? 1978. Your video is Yeah, yeah. So You'll have to edit it. Yeah, yeah, we're going to send them around and I'll edit out. Like, <laughs> yeah. Some references to the government. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what we're doing is... Uh, okay, so the key areas in, in TCM. Uh, GB20, or bladder 20. Bladder 10, which sits closer to the spine, pretty much on the same line. Extra point here, the name has escaped me. It's an extra point on the neck anyway. We'll, we'll, we'll dig it out. Uh, gallbladder 19, this treats vertigo, dizziness. We're then going to do a gallbladder meridian wipe on the side of the head, here, both sides. <coughs> and then we're going to treat a couple of points up here and pathway. So we're probably going to do 23, 22, this region. That treats the sinuses. Okay, so you can use the sheet, or in China they're just lazy, so <laughs> just put the colour up. And we start with Tui. And there are two types of twee. There's a long twee, which is very gentle, long motion. How do we know it's long? Because I'm moving more. If you see me doing this and it's just more the wrist, you know it's a short twee. Yeah. Always start at the top of the head, neck region, and then work your way down the neck. You want, you want the blood to calm them down, yeah? calm down the shen. Smooth movement. 
I don't want to see this. Yeah, I don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, depending on your patient and their preferences. I'm running out of this, but you you can get this on my own lotion. I'm getting Doug to make us our own version. So everyone here, everyone one for everyone in the audience, isn't that what your man says? Yeah. So I'll send it for you as a sample, and let me know what you think. So you have pretty much most in China they don't use amory that much anymore, partly because it's very expensive now, even for them, and also some people complain of the smell. Funny enough, even in China, they've got very, they've got very used to their Gucci and their uh, Yves Saint Laurent. So going home smelling of eau de Amaro is not really. People here love it. We're lucky. Yeah, yeah. And you know why they love it? Because it's blood moving. Yeah. It's astringent. Clearing. Clearing yeah. sinuses. Mm. We live in a cold, damp climate. Has that uh, So it's smooth. It should feel nice. Mm. Yeah. Then we come down the neck. You want to come to a T7, a C7 junction, T1. You'll know because it's the big wolf bone that sticks out here. Mm. And massage towards that. That clears colds. Nasaliness. That will help clear chest, upper, upper respiratory. You'll know upper respiratory because they'll have a little bit of sinus, a little bit in the throat, and they feel underneath the collarbone like there is phlegm there. And this will help how clear that. Come to the other side and repeat. So this is where you need your, your tweet to be good. And actually feel that there's more of an issue actually on the left side, even though you have pain. You know what I said, you yeah. On the right side. The muscles are always stronger, aren't they, on the side that it doesn't have the pain sometimes. So again, watch for that. Traditionally, mm. pain on the left side, I guarantee you, they will be sore on the opposite side, but they won't feel it and they'll go, that's funny, mm. that's my good side. So, the origin of of the symptoms is not necessarily where the pain is. It, we all know this, mm. yeah? Yep. Waking up the morning of your birthday or the following day, oh, me head. But it's, the origin is coming from somewhere else, yeah? Namely a very large bar towel that you haven't paid. But, that's the pain is coming from dehydration. So it's the same with the neck. So I'm working this area. Now, if I wish, I can add in the Amaru, a small amount. This is kind of what this will do is when he leaves the clinic or when after if it's a short treatment to the health fair. Be careful. Some people are allergic to it. We don't know. You can never tell. Not really allergic, but they get a reaction. If you massage it too much into the nape of the neck with a hair follicle's eye, you can irritate them. So keep the cream pretty much on the skin layer. Now, I'm going for... I'm just going to put a little bit in just to kind of warm up the area. So I'm not even going to use the Amaru therapeutically. I'm just going to put it in to take a bit of the chill out of his head. Using Rofa. See how I always use the whole of my arm. I never go this. My thumbs won't last. I'm massaging like this. Yeah, you see this a lot in Western massage. Therapists be doing this. We use everything. The whole thing is a continuous motion. Now the shorter tweet, your thumb comes closer and we then use more of the wrist and it becomes like a rocking action. How's that? 
stronger. And you will feel underneath your thumb, you will feel the tendon that runs next to the neck. So if I have to show you on bare skin what it looks like, it's this. Yeah? This is the motion. Yeah? <coughs> Getting in there now, aren't we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what you'll find is the more you do the technique and the more you stay with it, the more the person opens up. So if you feel you're not getting anywhere, stay with it. Vary your pressure, lighten it a bit. Let the person tune out. And when you feel them soften, then go in. Don't just go hammering away. Just stay with them. Wait for everything to soften. Then you can go in a bit deeper. You will get people who have vertigo that's triggered by spondylopathy, spondylolisthesis of the neck. What that means is they go to stand up and turn their head and they, whoa, and it's restricted arterial flow to the head. You'll know this because you'll, you'll ask the person to just turn their head quickly and they'll feel vertigo. So stand up or turn. And you'll know pretty much most of it is coming from the neck. It's a posture, restriction, previous damage, whiplash, sleeping awkwardly. This will help. Getting right down into that bone, C C7, C1. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, from there, then I go to GB19, the back of the skull here. You'll feel it, it's a big dip. Do you want to feel that? Yeah. Are you okay, kid? <laughs> feel that ridge? That's where it's at. The tendon attachment. Okay. Okay. Support the head. See how I'm holding this forward. I'm not just doing these techniques and letting his head go. Mm. I'm actually holding. I'm not compressing him. I'm just supporting it. Just get to bring your head forward slightly for me. And I'm doing this Ija Chan Twi. So I'm not doing straight Ija Chan. I'm doing a slight Twi. Just because it's more comfortable. If I do Ija Chan this way, my nail, because the scalp is very sensitive, my nail could start to, can you feel that? Mm -hmm. The nail. So if I do Ija Chan <coughs> Twi, then I'm, I'm more on the pad of my thumb and it's more, that's more comfortable. Feeling relaxed now? Yeah. yeah. So usually the person will start to zone in a little bit. That's the best me question. Huh? That's the best me question doing in Japan now. And taking the head, bring the head back against your chest. One side at a time, and two sides together. Similar to what you do if you're doing the lying down, and clearing the gallbladder meridian. And it's a vibration. In the white book I gave you, Chinese bodywork, you'll see this scraping method. It's not taught in, in other schools, but um, it's one of the original methods of learning. And then that book is the original Twin Island before we shifted to the Touch Twin Island style. But um, 
I like to bring, I like to, you know, do everything. <laughs> bring it all in. It's all useful. How's that feel? Very nice. Yeah. Taking in time, wiping up. Again, very gently. And elderly people don't use the amory because it can get into their eyes. And also on elderly people, their skin and the forehead is very weak, so you can leave a lot of bruising. So it's a very gentle wipe. Come out to stomach A, rotate. I'm supporting with the base of my palm here. Stomach A is the devil's horns, up here. Clears the phlegm, phlegm from the head. Cotton wool head syndrome. Common with people who drink seven lattes a day, they wake up in the morning with a cotton wool head. Yeah. Come down, then Tai Yang. Yeah. This will treat headaches as well, though, won't it? It will, it will. Uh, as a preventative, it may okay. not treat them in the middle of the headache. It may. Yeah. Tension headache mm. may lessen it by 50%. Okay. But, um, Insomnia. My guy falls asleep when we don't do it. Uh, yeah. If you're doing a somnia, do them lying down. Yeah. I guess yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> then backwards and forwards. See my whole hand. Just mm. wiping tie in. Backwards and forwards. Using the edge of my forefinger, it's very light. Then while he's resting, we press Shi Shen Kong. We do east and west together, north and south together. Shi Shen Kong is an extra point. S H I S H E N C O N G. Shi Shen Kong. One, two, one, two, just a little. Okay, not for too long. No, what, what was your rhythm? East, right, east, left, down, one, two, one, oh, two. Excellent. Not for too long. Do you know <coughs> yeah. why? Bring too much into the you bring them too much now down, mm. and then you come to the shoulder and they're too out of it. So you just want them in a relaxed state. Now I'm ready. Okay, we're ready to do the shoulder now. And you can see he's floppily duppily. <laughs> floppily duppily. So now it makes my life so much easier. Yeah. How's that? Good. Yeah. You can then add in rotations if you want. So what you do is you, you don't just put your hand on the head like this and go. Okay. See how I'm grasping? This is na, na, fa, grasping. See? One hand on the shoulder, and I move my body. The other way is this way. I don't like this one as much, but you can do it this way. And then the other way, this is more as a bigger rotational movement. So his head is rolling between my hands. So if you want to come around and see this. So the movement is and 
the feeling for the restriction and not going beyond it. The opposite direction because it will feel different for him. And then keeping my sense of moving with it. So there's a bit of a I can also then do traction. So here, I get in front of the ears. Get my chest and my belly anyway against his back. Get the head back. Okay, on. Mm -hmm. Take a breath in for me. And it's a gentle lift. It looks like I'm using loads of power. No, How's that? It's quite gentle, yeah. And just by holding my structure, not pulling him, I'm kind of strengthening my structure and lengthening my spine. That's where the traction comes in. I'm not doing this because it's going to hurt him. Mm. Yeah? If you somebody put that hand on my back to feel the structure change. Lengthening your spine. Lengthening the spine, thank you. If you're doing that, you hold 10, 15 seconds release. Seven or eight times. And that will take compression off the disc. I tend to prefer traction lying down because I'm lazy. <laughs> but you can, you know. How's it feel? Yeah, good. Yeah. Mm. Just move your head and 